Hey guys, so I get this question all the time. I'm learning to code, but it's really difficult. It's a lot of pressure on the brain. I get tired. It's this normal stuff. Of course it's normal. When you're doing anything new, whether it be physical, like lifting weights, trying to, or running extra far if you're a long distance runner or whatever, or learning something new, especially something like coding, it's going to create some stressors on the mind and the body. In fact, the uh, psychologists will tell you, and they've done the studies, that uh, pressure when learning something or being exposed to a lot of different information or new, new circumstances has a draining effect on the body just like heavy duty exercise would. They call it cognitive load, the load on the cognitive mind. And so you have to expect when you're learning something new, but you are going to get tired. You're going to hit walls. There are going to be circumstances where um, it's just you get a headache even. It happens once in a while. So that's cool because just like when you're working out and you're lifting weights and you feel the burn you know, in your arms or wherever, or you feel the burn in your lungs when you're running uh, hard and you're trying to get your cardiovascular you know, doing better. It's the same thing when you're learning something new. When you feel a little stressor on your brain and so on, you're feeling tired or, you know, it's just not sinking in, that's cool. Just take a break. Come back an hour later, come back a day later, doesn't matter. This is normal and it's actually a good sign. When you start feeling resistance, where you're getting those, that, those stressors on the mind, you've accomplished your goal for the day. You've expanded your mental capacities and capabilities so now it's time just like any type of other workout you got to give your body time to rest time to uh, assimilate the new information the new way of thinking that you just uh, you know expose yourself to so it's a good thing whenever I come across something and I hit that wall I say okay good I did I achieved my goal for today in terms of your goals, the big mistake in terms of goal setting is to concentrate on that long-term goal. For instance, I want to become a, a great freelance developer. Maybe that's your goal. Or I want to be able to build amazing websites using Node.js, I don't know, or PHP, whatever. pick your language, doesn't matter. Now, the problem with those type of long-term goals is that you're never going to be satisfied because until you get there, which could take a little bit of time, Less time than you think, but a little time, you're not going to be happy. So what you should do is you, ha you should make your goal the goal of doing a certain amount of work every day or every other day on your task. It applies to whether you're learning programming or you want to make gains in terms of your exercise routines or financially. What you should make your goal is the daily activity that will take you to where you want to go. So for me, when I want to learn a new program, programming language, my goal is not to learn the programming language. Well, my long-term goal is to learn the programming language, but my real goal on a day-to-day -day basis is just to get a little bit further. So if you're doing Studio Web, for instance, it's structured that way. It's structured with an understanding of how our brains work. It's structured around psychology. That was my major in university, psychology, so I have a bit of an understanding with regards to all this. So with the Studio Web learning system, by the way, it's divided up into nice little even chunks, video quizzing, co-challenges, video quizzing, co-challenges, and everything is tracked and scored as you go along so you can see your progress on a daily basis. That's really cool. So you can say to yourself, okay, today I'm not feeling too good, a little tired. I'm only going to do one five-minute video. They're all five, six minutes. And I'm just going to answer the quiz questions for that video. Hey, I moved forward. So you've moved forward a step, right? Or you might say, I'm going to just do one chapter today. So you do the three or four or five, whatever number of videos, and you do that chapter. What's really cool about Studio Web, and I'm tooting my own horn a little bit, I admit, is that let's say you have a big chapter that has you know, 15, 20 lessons. And if you do five lessons, Studio Web tracks that, remembers where you were, and when you log back in the next day or two days later when you're taking a rest, giving your mind a chance to, uh, to assimilate the new information, you log back in, it takes you right to where you were. So you don't have to mess around, try, where was I, I don't remember, blah, blah, blah. It's all there for you. You can review it. You can get right back, get going again. So getting back to the main point, you want to create little mini goals. And the goals are just you progressing each and every day. So if you hit a wall, 
you're getting a headache because you're trying to learn and it's not seeking in, that's normal, that's cool. Just come back to it a couple of days later. That's all. No big deal. The reason I'm doing this vlog is because I got this question put to me. So I thought, hey, this is a good idea. Let everybody know because this is very common. I get this question all the time. Happened to me. Happens to the, the best developers in the world. So you just got to take it step by step, day by day. And I'm telling you, it's really worth it. When you learn to code, whether you start with markup language like HTML, then a styling language like CSS, then you move into full-fledged programming with JavaScript, PHP, uh, database coding with SQL, you are going into a whole new stratosphere. You're, you're, if you haven't done it before, you're, you're exposing your brain to a whole new way of thinking and of processing. And I don't want to say it's... Uh, elite but it's it really opens up a lot of possibilities when you learn the proper fundamentals of software development coding even if you never become a software developer you've you've taken your mind that maybe like this and you've opened it up like this you're opening up this huge world of potential so let's say you're a small business owner and you just want tools that you can access tools technical tools mental tools that you can access to build a business so you do the web development course, you do Python course, whatever. You understand how programming works. You understand how app development works all of a sudden. So then when you go to work with professional developers or professional, professional web developers or web, web designers, you'll be able to speak their language, number one, which means you'll be able to communicate with them more effectively, which means you're going to be able to keep your costs lower. Also, you're going to have a much better idea in terms of what you need for your business at this particular point in time because you'll understand what's actually going on behind the scenes. So it's really cool to learn how to code on so many levels. Another, you know, you're probably not thinking about this because most of my audience are younger age, but if you, as you get older, one of the things that keeps off, you know, Alzheimer's and dementia and all these different things is to learn new things. You don't want to get into routine. So just learning how to code, if you haven't coded before, or learning a new language, if you haven't never done before, is going to literally, uh, it's going to reinforce your brain. It's going to prevent your brain from diminishing over time. Just like if you work out on a regular basis, your body is not going to atrophy. You can see some people, I know a lot of people uh, in my family, the ones who exercise, they had extremely healthy, vibrant lives until their late 80s. Whereas, or, or older, some of them even, whereas people who didn't exercise, their bodies atrophy. They, they sag and they become, they get all kinds of illnesses and they, they have troubles with mobility. Same thing in terms of thinking. The people who continue to learn new things, try different ideas, expose themselves to different things, the benefits are huge in terms of just training your brain, keeping your brain uh, limber and loose and uh, young. So, that is another reason to learn to code. There's so many reasons. I manage my software developers now. I'm not coding every day anymore because I just don't have the time. But I still poke around. I keep up to date on what's going on out there because of all the reasons I just described. For me, when I sit down with my lead developer and I say, okay, what are we going to do in terms of implementation of Studio Web 4? This is the training app I spoke about before. I... Um, I can speak to them about the latest technologies because I'm aware of it. What, what JavaScript frameworks to use, what uh, back-end server-side frameworks to use, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's very important. Anyhow, I hope this helps you guys out. If you're learning how to code, you're getting headaches, I'm wrapping it up here. Don't worry, it's normal. That means you've made progress. And again, little goal-setting tip. Make your goal uh, not becoming a master programmer, although that's in the back of your mind. Your, your goal should be daily, daily or every other day, progressing further. Whether it be coding, whether it be business, whether it be exercise, just like, okay, I did my 10 push-ups today. I did my two videos on Studio Web today. That is going to take you a long way, a long way. 20 minutes a day, you, you'd be amazed at how much it would do for you in terms of learning how to code, starting your business, starting your freelance business, getting into shape. 20 minutes a day is has an incredible impact. 20 minutes is no big deal. 20 minutes. I think you can do it. All right. I hope this helps. Bye-bye.